Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Henry Schein Dental Academy webinar series. My name is Adam, Marketing Specialist, and I'll be your moderator. We are excited to welcome Jamie Collins as our speaker today, as she will share how to increase revenue with teledentistry. Before we get started, we have a few reminders for you. At any point during today's webinar, we do encourage your participation. Please type any questions you might have into the chat or Q&A section of your control panel, and we'll answer them live at the end of the presentation. Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. And this webinar is sponsored by Henry Schein's Dental Business Institute, as well as Teledent by Mouthwatch. Jamie, thanks for sharing your time with us today. The floor is yours. Wonderful. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, as he mentioned, my name is Jamie Collins. I am a hygienist. I also work with um, multiple companies as a KOL subject matter expert. I've been in the dental field for about 22 years. I'm fortunate enough to write for different publications. You may have seen a few articles floating around out there, as well as work with the textbook companies. Um, I do work with the Dental Coding Consortium, where we provide testimony to the ADA concerning dental codes. And I am the senior client system success manager and professional education manager at Mouthwatch and Teledent. My email is at the top. Should any questions come up, please feel free to reach out and connect. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to identify the cost savings and potential revenue streams by implementing teledentistry into your practice. We're also gonna look at the benefits and opportunities teledentistry provides and discuss some of the marketing strategies to really get it out there and make it accessible for you and your patients. Um, a little background of what, as well, our experience at Mouthwatch, we've been in the teledentistry space for almost 10 years to date and really have looked at ways to bring providers together and providers and patients together. And as we know, COVID-19 came forth and really thrust teledentistry into the spotlight and forced practices to look at a new way of doing things. But what we're finding out is patients are really happy with it as well as providers. And so it's opened the doors for new opportunities. Our position and our mission here at Mouthwatch is really to improve oral care through solutions that enhance patient care and coordination boost the patient understanding, and find a way to facilitate that delivery of advanced care. Recent statistics that have come forth, when they did a survey to look how COVID affected dental practices in the US, 46% of dentists had a drop, or, drop in revenue and felt that was a number one impact on their business. 40% say that revenue loss and the increased cost of doing dentistry is the biggest challenge for 2021. And 19% said the cost of PPE has been the number one impact. Just think how hard it is to find gloves, masks, all that PPE and supply and demand. The cost to do it has gone up. And then 22% believe that there's new opportunities as a result. This does include teledentistry. Another interesting statistic is about 42% of US adults reported that they've delayed or avoided treatment during the pandemic because of concerns about COVID-19 exposure and, and contracting it. You probably read the same studies that I have that many dental practices now are no, um, seeing only a fraction of the patients they saw a year prior. One out of three solo practitioners said they're not busy enough. So where do you fit into that 33%? Are you not as busy as you want to be? Are you looking for different alternatives? And in turn, that's also going to really increase that bottom line. Telehealth in general 
is the fastest growing alternative health delivery option we have. And there is a cost savings to it. Telemedicine can help save on healthcare costs anywhere from 19 to $121 per patient, depending on the services provided. The market's expected to be a $64 billion market by 2025. It's growing. And then 85% of Americans said that they would consider telemedicine if it was available and affordable. And so telehealth, we think about it, we think about it for our medical that we do. And some of the big names in their talk space, American Well, Teladoc, um, doctor on demand. They're providing these services to patients in a medical format. And it's been proven and it's been successful. And it's really paved the way for what we do in dentistry. There's everything from teleradiology to telewound care, telestroke services, providing sooner access to care and better overall care to get those patients the care they need. Teledentistry is really not that much different. The statistics and trends we're seeing over the past year, every 14 seconds, somebody visits the emergency department for a dental condition. And that equates to about 2.2 million visits a year to the cost of $2.4 billion for dental problems landing in the emergency department rather than at the dentist. They estimate that 80% of those emergency visits could be seen in a community setting. And then again, less than half of Americans see a dentist a year. And it's about 30% of adults, 19 to 34 in age, have seen a dentist in the past 12 months. Teledentistry gives us a way to capture this patient population. Cost savings, increase in care, it can all happen through teledentistry. And many times we know we have two CDT codes for teledentistry, but how are they used? The synchronous is a real time in video conferencing, much like we're doing right now. It's the face-to-face, -face, we're on at the same time. And then asynchronous is the store and forward. This would mean one provider is capturing the images, the data, the radiographs, and then sending it to another provider for consultation and our treatment planning. And then we'll talk about some ways that this can happen as well. So teledentistry used to be really a way to create that touch point and connect dental providers to patients at the point of care. This may be community services, often was more of a mobile dentistry or public health, but really it does a lot more. Now we're connecting and managing cases all together for collaborative care. And it's really creating that consistent care, that, that comfort and that treatment planning, especially where access to care may be limited or restricted, whether it's due to COVID or beyond. So some of our recent trends we also see when it's pandemic related. We saw increased adoption by providers because dentists like yourself were trying to figure out during the closure, how do we stay connected with our patients? It's also used for infection control, pre-screening. And then it's led to legislative adoptions throughout the country in different states. And many states are moving forward to be more teledentistry friendly and adopt that wording into the Dental Practice Acts. In turn, insurance companies are seeing the cost savings and there's reimbursement coming forth. And then it really creates more of a, a personalized encounter, much like we are here versus all of our extra PPE where we feel like we're in a hazmat suit, you know, head to toe. There's not much of you sticking out anymore. Long-term benefits, we're looking at behavior changes with teledentistry. 
we're able to stay connected, do more frequent screenings, and really have those follow-up appointments rather than have the patient come to the office for a 15-minute check and then drive home, where their drive time's longer than they are in the chair. The convenient and access for patients. This is gonna be a big driving force and it's moving forward in that aspect already. And really creating those digital workflows to make it flow as best as it can as part of your practice. So we're shifting those pre-op visits, those initial evaluations to teledentistry. If I can do a teledentistry visit with you, you say you broke a tooth, and it's amazing what a patient can capture with an iPhone or smartphone. And I can see, okay, well, we need to either schedule two hours for a crown or we can schedule a 35 minute to, to just do a quick little filling because that's all it needs. It's gonna be more productive. And there's some clear benefits because we have the collaboration between providers and it may be medical dental, and it may be dental to dental. There is a positive community outreach that comes along with teledentistry as well. And then there's the autonomy. More and more states are allowing for general supervision of dental hygienists, where you can create those collaborative agreements between us and we can go back and forth. And then there's a true flexibility with it as well, because it allows you to connect with patients no matter where you're at. And then it can bring with that flexibility, definitely more, um, more joy in your profession. You don't have to come in on a Saturday to see a patient for a toothache. If it's something you can do via, via teledentistry platform, from your kid's baseball game. Throughout the, the country, we do have healthcare provider shortage areas. I grew up in a very rural community. We're talking, it's a two hour drive to get the, to the nearest town bigger than you. And there's nothing in between. If you have to go for medical treatment or dental treatment, it's an all day event. Taking time off work and travel expenses. Teledentistry allows you to reach those patients for that initial screening and evaluation, thus saving time and money. Remember how many people avoided dental treatment moving forward? This is happening still. We can capture those. And realistically, there's more than 59 million Americans that live in these dental shortage areas. Rural patients make up about 30% or 30% more likely to go to the emergency department than, than areas where they have easier access. And again, it estimates 80% of emergency treatment could be seen in a community setting. And less than half of Americans see a dentist each year. That access to care and capturing that patient population is a very, very viable reason to implement this within your practice. There's many studies coming out about cost savings and what we're seeing as well. Um, one study that came out, and this is looking more into telehealth specifically, and they saved $86 on every patient that they saw via telehealth versus in person we're still billing for the same procedures. However, less staff time, less PPE, less room cleanup, more available time for productive procedures. The average cost of an ER visit is over $1,700. An in-person visit's about 146. A virtual visit, they said, about 79. Cost savings for the patient for the provider as well. So really some key takeaways of that, when we look at cost savings, it's gonna be the PPE. The costly, hard to get PPE, you can preserve that 
for what you're able to use within your practice for those necessary hands-on procedures. You're also looking at efficiency. When you have a patient come in for a limited evaluation, most practices that I know schedule about 30 minutes. You're going to come in, we'll take an x-ray if indicated, we're gonna look, the doctor's gonna look and then we're gonna say, all right, Mr. Jones, we need to get you back for treatment. How does next week at this sound? Versus being able to do it via teledentistry, the average teledentistry visit is 15 minutes because you don't have the room set up and the room breakdown in addition. So you're saving time. You're able to see more patients if you choose to do so with efficiency and you're saving the cost. When we look at patient safety, we're looking at an infection control. You and I can't catch anything from each other through this computer screen versus in person. There's also, again, reduced office time. Uh, we have practices that are using it for all of their initial new patient encounters. So we'll meet, we'll discuss your chief complaints, we'll review your medical history before you come into the office. So I know what you're coming in for and you're here for maybe an hour instead of an hour and a half. This is all happening virtually. And then it is building on revenue. Teledentistry is a billable procedure with your codes. You always bill it in conjunction with your evaluation codes or your procedure codes. So you're gonna bill your limited eval and you're gonna bill your teledentistry code, your D9995 or D9996 code in conjunction. Many third-party payers are paying on those now too. And so you're also saving that chair time for restorative procedures. You're able to reserve that for things that are really truly gonna be greater revenue, like that crown prep or like that implant that we need to do. And I hear from doctors, they say, Jamie, but what does a patient think? Dentistry is hands-on and I'm not going to argue that. However, Teledentistry is an enhancement to your practice. It doesn't replace the hands-on, it just makes it easier, more efficient, and provides that revenue stream. And patients like it because they're saving on time, they're saving on travel. There's more engagement face-to-face -face when we're not wearing all that PPE. We can present treatment plans involving the decision maker of the home. How many times do you hand a treatment plan and they say, okay, well, I need to go home and talk to my husband. If we do those case presentations, especially a large case presentation, and we're able to share our screen, show the images and discuss it with the husband and wife or whoever the decision maker may be, and create that value with everybody involved, you're gonna get a higher case acceptance. In turn, earlier access to care as well, especially for those at-risk populations. You're able to explain better understanding and the convenience. A couple studies that came out, 97% patient satisfaction rate. And of those, 80% of those had never had a virtual telehealth encounter prior to their teledentistry visit. So they were happy with it. They were happy with the outcome. They felt they were understood. And 96% said that they would use teledentistry again. 33% of teledentistry encounters did not require an in-office visit. That's a big number, 33%. So we're getting the patients that need it into the clinic as they need to be. And then we look at options. How do we market this whole teledentistry idea to our patients? How do we get it known? 
and we look at where it's being used. Teledentistry is being used in private practice. It's being used in offsite preventative care, collaborative agreements with a dental hygienist, in pop-up dental programs where they may take them into uh, places of business, mobile dental programs, uh, extended hygiene hours. You can expand your hours that you as a dentist do not have to be at the practice, but you can still provide supervision with your hygienist who maybe work in extended hours, as well as multi-practice supervision. So if you have multi-locations, you're able to do it in that manner. Or if you have a traveling specialist that maybe goes between these sites, they can have instant access to care and the data from these patients that may be in the practice physically at this time, while the specialist is in another site. Uh, group practices, again, offsite preventative, outreach programs, really provides those innovative practice models. Schools, I read a study today that dental caries in um, children specifically from school dentist coming in and preventative care, the risk has gone down greatly and the amount of caries over a prolonged period of time was reduced to about 18% from 30 odd some percent. Um, Long-term care facilities, nursing homes, where these patients have a hard time getting into you, you can do that initial screening via teledentistry and create that revenue for it. Rural, again, public health and rural settings. Uh, we're seeing more and more of the medical dental collaboration coming forth as well. I know people that are sending their hygienists to a pediatrician's office to do initial screening and preventative care. And through teledentistry, all that information goes back to the dentist for evaluation and that treatment comes to them as it's needed. Capturing those early childhood caries, urgent care settings, um, ER facilities, the physician in the emergency department can um, connect, excuse me, with the dentist for the evaluation when those patients show up in the emergency department. Because what do they do now? Okay, you have pain, we're gonna give you pain medication, you need to contact a dentist because there's nothing we can do for you here. That's very typical of toothaches that end up in the emergency department, costing billions of dollars every year. Home health, and we look at collaborative care as well. We really enhance that referral process, whether it's we're referring to a medical doctor or an oral surgeon for biopsy, or we're monitoring that, even using it with dental labs, we can send them videos and images of what the dentition looks like prior to creating that custom restoration. And then whole collaborative team efforts. I do know doctors that are using it. Say we have a kid that has to go through ortho and extractions. We can all come together and do that, that case discussion via teledentistry with the oral surgeon the orthodontist, the general dentist, and possibly the parents of the child all at once to ensure we have the best care for that child. And then it's used widely in education and curriculum development. Schools are using it for their preoperative, postoperative appointments, uh, nutritional counseling, everything all together uh, really comes into multiple aspects. And it's how it's going to benefit you and your organization as a practice. And creating that virtual dental home. This is what we look for, especially in community-based programs where they can refer to your dental practice or it's where people receive care in the community or their work environment that they're at. And this goes from kids at Head Start to school-age kids to adults. Um, we have some that are using them in um, special needs homes as well. 
So again, we're looking at that community-based, really providing that preventative and therapeutic connection and doing it through technology and providing the best collaborative care we can. And then we look at that, that data review and that treatment planning that can all happen together with the remote providers and using it on a device. Many patients think as well, what do we need to do teledentistry? I'm not sending an intraoral camera to my patient. Realistically, you need an internet connection. You need either a computer or a smartphone. If you're using it out, out in other areas, I would recommend a camera. However, if we're connecting with patients like you and I are, it is really, really impressive what they capture with the smartphone and with the help. So software, internet connection, and a computer is really all you need. And you can really take those records on the go. You can access those no matter where you're at. So if a patient connects with you and has a toothache and you're out of town, or let's pretend vacationing in Hawaii, which I'm sure we would all love to do right now, you have access to those patient records. You can do consent forms, data collection. You can really customize it to your practice and your needs as well. And no more handing the patient the paper referral. Instead of doing that, you can close that dropped referral loop and connect with the specialist right then and there through either synchronous or asynchronous care. So it improves the provider availability. We know that we can efficiently schedule, we can simplify those collaborative agreements provide that supervision if mandated by your Dental Practice Act in your state. We can remotely authorize services. If you have to supervise a hygienist who is in a long-term care facility, you can connect synchronously, authorize them to complete the treatment and still be in compliance. And then it provides the, the ability for autonomy as well. It teledent the how we see patients using it or providers using it is really that patient facing technology. Providers coast to coast are connecting with their patients using the secure platform. And then collaboration between teams. As I said, maybe that oral surgeon, orthodontist, and general dentist together, referrals, lab consultations that medical dental integration piece. And then really looking at that new patient intake form. Patients can request it, request a teledentistry visit from you easily from our intake form onto your website. Mobile dentistry practices, they were growing before the pandemic, which put everything on hold, but now they're starting to come alive again and really seeing the benefits of, of reaching those at-risk communities and really providing that access to care. Teleorthodontics, we're seeing some of that as well through teledentistry. And then um, dental schools, residency programs, helping bring that and those supervision requirements forth. Some examples of how we have seen um, offices implement it, especially during COVID, and they're maintaining these practices because they see the benefits. Um, Dr. Raphael is an orthodontist out of New Jersey, and his initial new patient visit was about three hours, full pictures, comprehensive treatment, everything all together. And now he has the families, the parents, take images from their smartphone, sends them a very detailed guide on how to do so, and then you send them back and submit them. From that, he submits a 35-page 
portfolio on what he sees, his recommendation, uh, really a innovative model on how they're treating patients. And then they had a 45 minute call to discuss the findings and a short visit in the office. So altogether, that three hour visit came down to about 45 minutes total. And they found that, that connecting with the patients, especially their myofunctional therapy patients, more frequently, they were getting better results. So instead of waiting till they saw him in clinic, they would do more frequent visits via teledentistry and they got better results from it. Dr. Barakat, um, just a general dentist out of, um, oh my goodness, I forgot what state she's in. Fantastic, but she's using it to connect with her patients via teledentistry on weekends after hours and really using it for the emergency consult. And what she's finding is patients love it. She's being able to screen, do that initial screening for them, send the referrals as needed, but it's saving her time and it's provided that revenue stream as well. DentaQuest Care Group uses Teledent and, and what they're finding and reporting is 93% of their patients easily understood the instructions on how to conduct a teledentistry visit. 86% of those polled said they would recommend it to others. And again, 33% did not require an in-person follow-up. How many visits, limited evaluations have you had from parents that maybe that six-year-old molar is erupting and the kid's complaining when they eat? They think there's something wrong. You can do this through teledentistry rather than come in on a Friday night or a Saturday afternoon to provide them assurance that all is right, all is okay, and it's normal. Benefits to providers. Again, we're really able to pre-screen patients and being able to prioritize who needs to be seen immediately. We can discuss the protocols that we're going through in our office to ensure we're protecting our patients and our staff from COVID. So it gives them peace of mind to actually come in physically. We can authorize prescriptions, and we'll get into that in a moment as well, depending on your State Practice Act. Provide that education, oral hygiene education, post-operative checks in education, any of that stuff that can happen via teledentistry is, and it's happening very successfully. You can also reach those patients that you may not have reached before because you establish yourself as a resource. And so moving forward from the, the pace, patient side, excuse me, the messaging via the portal, the patient can share images. They can reach out, they can share files, you can share health histories, you can share post-operative instructions, PDFs, whatever you need to share for that patient, that can happen through a secure, encrypted, and password-protected portal. Therefore, you meet the HIPAA requirements or to be um, aligned with them. But we can also do, again, our screenings. We can do our initial COVID screenings before they come into practice. Face-to-face, -face, the video calls, the synchronous, much like we are now, we're offering the consultations. We're offering that peace of mind. We're treatment planning, diagnosing, and we're especially reaching those at-risk communities. In some states, they require a face-to-face -face for prescribing. Mentorship and education is happening via teledentistry as well as referrals and collaboration. So collaborating with them, creating that strong referral network, we're able to ensure the patient's getting care. You're also capturing those patients to come see you as well. It is important to look at your State Practice Act depending on where you're at to know your legislative guidelines via teledentistry. This means who can use it 
and in what form they can use it and in what setting. Some states, a few states have only public health or others are wide opening and allow it for, um, as well. As a quick reference map, the teledentistry regulation that's solid is in dark blue. Teledentistry friendly states are in light blue. And then we see our two that are more of a pink or a red. And those are the states that do not have legislation. However, I do know that they're working on it. So we will see what comes up from that. Again, look at your State Practice Act or contact your dental board. And then you want to ensure as a not so gentle reminder that you're, whatever you're using for teledentistry, you're HIPAA compliant because the fines are big and the fines are out there and you can still be held liable for that. So you want that patient record. You want to have the, the notations, the data, the images. That's why you need to do it via a software, teledentistry software, versus going over FaceTime. Reimbursement, we talked about legislation. Reimbursement has been accelerated as well with COVID. Dental companies are recognizing the benefits of teledentistry, the cost savings to them for preventative care, and how that comes forth. So whether it is Medicaid, or commercial plans, third-party payers, the Deltas, Cigna's, Emeritus, they're all starting to cover teledentistry in addition to your evaluation code. Currently, your licensing, there is no specific license to practice teledentistry in any state. However, you can only provide care within the state you're licensed in. So if I'm trying to provide care to the state next, next door, I can be held liable and I, if I'm not licensed there. So it's only where you hold an active license. Some states are beginning to offer telehealth training required for any medical or dental provider that are using, um, using telehealth in any form. Uh, Washington State, for example, is one where there's requirements that they go over how to protect yourself, how to protect your patient as well. To, to prescribe in some states, you have to have a face-to-face -face encounter. This can't be only by audio means via phone. So you're going to have to connect as we are now. Again, look at your State Practice Act. Know if this applies to you has to be for a legitimate purpose, medical purpose, in accordance with state and federal laws, which I'm sure you're well aware of. When we talk about reimbursement again, we wanna look at your State Practice Act. Who can use it and how can they use it? Who's eligible, basically? And then know if how that falls. Many of the Medicaid providers are paying teledentistry. Absolutely, they're reimbursing for that in addition to their evaluation codes. Um, know that that reimbursement policies may change and they are in constant change right now as states are adopting these. And then look at how, at the parity laws. So a parity law means in your state, any of the third party payers must reimburse telehealth at the same rate they reimburse for an in-person visit. So if I'm charging $50 for a limited evaluation and I do it via telehealth, they can't pay me 25 if there's a parity law in place. I get reimbursed for that rate as it would in person. Technical considerations for any tele, uh, telehealth or teledentistry program that you choose to use. Look at the IT infrastructure. You must protect the patient's PHI, no matter what you're using. And you should have those backup capabilities. Um, is it cloud-based? Is it going to be able to, to cover that in case you need to? Does it create that record 
in case you have to go back and prove due to a complaint. Regardless, you must document all patient encounters and in their medical record, dental record as necessary. HIPAA compliance, the dreaded HIPAA word. There's no distinct or separate requirements for telehealth. However, regardless, you have to protect that patient PHI and you need to look at the setting you are in as you're conducting these evaluations and consults, not to expose it. In addition, you wanna make sure the patient is comfortable not to expose it. We don't wanna be conducting these from Starbucks. If your state has stricter laws than the federal HIPAA laws, you can still be held liable. For a short period of time, the ADA had relaxed or made announcements, they relaxed federal HIPAA laws to conduct telehealth via other means. But again, depending on your state, those may not have relaxed. So getting into marketing a little bit more, we want to look at how do you let your patients know? How do we discuss what we're doing and moving forward? And realistically, you have to tell them. So let them know that you offer teledentistry. Let them know how you can help. How can it help your practice? And how is it implemented into your workflow in your day? Have it present on your website. Make the online options very clear. Have actionable buttons and we'll get into that as well. Maybe you have a web form where they can fill out and request a telehealth visit. You wanna capture the, the basic demographic information and then consider how you're scheduling. Maybe you have a cloud-based scheduler where it can just automatically schedule a time in. Do you have a patient portal on your website? If you do or consider it, that patient portal can allow you to join the video calls, message your provider. You can see your plan and, and moving forward. And how does that apply to the patient? You need to have that explanation to them. As part of that, again, have an action button on your website. We offer patient portals and live teledentistry visits and either a schedule button or schedule your virtual consult, schedule your telehealth visit, request an appointment. Maybe they don't schedule directly, but it will allow you to come in and get that request that there is a patient who wants to come into your practice. And implement it into your workflow. Many of us already have forms on our sites for health history, HIPAA, all the other forms the patient needs to fill out. So why not make that part of that patient portal and have it in there as well? We can integrate it into the scheduler. Um, at Teledent, we have a patient intake form where they can fill out the problem, chief complaint, request, the demographics, and then it gets submitted to you for review, and then you can schedule accordingly. And again, quick teledentistry appointments. So once they confirm on that web form, you have all the information. It can put them into the, the program, depending on the program you use. And at that point, you can message the patient through the portal. You can have your office administration call them and get them set up for a quick telehealth consult. Some of the key points, again, we wanna make it visible. We wanna make it known that you have these options available. Capture those patients who have been reluctant to return to your practice. And then do that through that web form and implement that scheduling as well. And once you invite them to the portal, you can begin those synchronous or asynchronous teledentistry encounters as needed. And then inform them. Give them options for care. I know on a personal front, I found that I really like telehealth visits versus driving 20 minutes to get there and 20 minutes back and sitting in a waiting room. You're going to find your patients like the convenience and the affordability of it as well. 
rather than trying to find daycare for their kids to come in to sit in your chair for 15 minutes. We have live video consults. It's secure messaging. You can access the data. You can see your treatment plan. We can share, we can discuss. Let them know the options. And I think you'll be happy with the success. Market it in your email. Many of us have programs that we're able to market and mass message all of our patients we have emails for. And really try to see it from your patient perspective. You're communicating your commitment to care to your patients. Let them know, how does it help them get care? How does it simplify their life? How does it reduce and save them time and money? And it's really that peace of mind aspect. You're speaking to them and you're speaking to the emotion of it. And then put the link that you offer this. When you do it, again, make the sentences short. Make them paragraphs short and concise. Do it in bullet points so they can see the key topics easily. And, and make your subject line when you're emailing them clear why they need to open it versus come to the dentist. There's other options. Do you send out a newsletter for your patients? You may include that in the newsletter as well, but be sure to check with your state practice act because some states do have limitations on these as well. Um, let them know too that you can access that patient portal from anywhere. We can access it from the phone. We can access it from our computer. Um, let them see the, the data that you share with them. Through Teledent, they can't see everything. They can only see what we share. Um, it can be used for, for consultations and, and um, also used for uh, reaching out and being able to do the live video consults as well. And again, let them know via that newsletter. Are you doing it newsletter? Are you doing it traditional mail? Are you doing it via one of your messaging where they can get a text message? You know, these are just some examples on how you'll be able to do those. You know, wondering if your child has a serious dental con condition. Let's have a consult. Let's get for reassurance. You know. Let them know that you're available. Many offices will also put this on their wait message. If they get called the office and get put on hold, have you, have you registered for our patient portal? You can have access to, to Dr. Jacobs anytime that you're, you needed it to. You have concerns about COVID-19. We're conducting teledentistry visits. There's a multitude of options to market this and make it accessible for your patients. And don't miss the boat on social media. We all know that everybody shares everything on social media. 75% of adults 18 to 24 and 57% of adults 25 to 34 use social networking sites. 61% of adults in the US gather that information online. And then they look at that and ask opinions. Who should I go to? Many of the information, and you probably know, word of mouth and word of social media can drive your business. 38% of us look at internet users, or of internet users look online to find out information about hospitals, medical facilities, and, and where should we go? We look up everything because it's at our fingertips. We have that availability. So how can we help? Um, at Mouthwatch, we offer Teledent, which is our all-in-one teledentistry platform. We've been a leading resource moving forward in teledentistry long before COVID hit. And so we can provide recommendations to your workflow. How can we make this flow? And then the screenings. We look at CDT and dental coding and the ways to do that to ensure you're getting reimbursed as well. 
we do training and onboarding to all of our software and availability should questions arise. We've really been one of the, the leading companies in the expertise in teledentistry. So we are here as a resource. And, and finally, we'll get to really what are some of the additional benefits of teledentistry? How can we make this work for you? We're capturing that lost patient flow. Those patients that we haven't been able to see because they were reluctant to, turn to return to care, we're helping instill confidence in them and still ensuring they're getting that care. We're also able to capture those patients maybe that would have gone to the emergency department versus coming to a dentist or those rural, rural areas, if we can capture them and let them know what's going on and schedule them accordingly, especially when it comes to those emergency patients. Children, going to the dentist many times is scary for kids initially. That's before we had to don all the extra PPE. If we have a one-on-one -on -one quick consult with the parent and the child via teledentistry and let them see you're a real person underneath all of that gear, it's gonna help your process moving forward. Using that in that medical dental collaboration as well. You can work out a collaborative agreement with pediatricians, or sending your hygienist to those alternative sites and being able to capture those patients that aren't seen anywhere, essentially. You're saving on the PPE. You're saving on cleaning time and room turnover, staff time that it takes to do that. I have oral surgeons that are using teledentistry as part of their, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, as part of their um, consultation process because the general dentist provides them with the cone bean, the health history, everything else. So at the end of his surgery day, he does consults and sets up his next surgeries with his patients, all via teledentistry, while his staff is wrapping up the office and everybody gets to go home a little bit sooner. It provides opportunities for alternative business models. You can really enhance your practice and your bottom line by implementing teledentistry. Remember, if they show up in the office, you get the limited evaluation code you can bill for. You spend money on PPE, barriers, staff time, takes about 30 minutes. If you use it through teledentistry, you can get your limited evaluation, your teledentistry code, no staff time, no PPE, and generally it takes about 15 minutes. Uh, many practices are also using in-office teledentistry where everybody's working, but instead of getting up, changing your PPE to go do a quick five minute hygiene check, changing again to go back to your operative chair, the hygienist is just capturing everything you review it later in the day, and then you interact with the patient via a quick, either synchronous if need be, or asynchronous through the messaging and patient portal. Everything looks great, Mrs. Jones. I don't see any concerns. We'll see you again in three months or six months, whatever it may be. And you're saving time and chair time for restorative, and revenue generating procedures rather than the quick limited evaluation or the post-ops that normally would take about 30 minutes. So I hope this gives you a little bit more insight and maybe some ideas on how to implement teledentistry to really increase that revenue and capture those lost patients. Um, you can visit mouthwatch.com if you have other questions. My email is at the bottom there. It's jamie at mouthwash.com. And I'm going to turn it back over to Henry Schein. And we'll answer some questions. Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. We've got a few minutes left and we have some questions. So we'll jump right in. 
the first question is, what is the platform for individual tel teledentistry? Is it a Zoom personal room or even a phone call? How do you set up a face-to-face? -face? Um, we really recommend, and I would recommend from the dental provider aspect, you're using a teledentistry platform, much like Teledent, because you're gonna protect that patient PHI, as well as you're gonna have a patient record and documentation of that event versus something like Skype or Zoom is not HIPAA compliant and can be hacked. Do you think that eventually a teledentist will be considered on site for hygienists? I think I read that correctly. Um, depending on the state, if they have to be physically present, it depends on your state practice act. In many states, there is general supervision, which just means you have to work underneath a dentist rather than independent practice. And so teledentistry offers that, uh, that way to provide that supervision. If we use your service for a period of time and then discontinue using it, will the files we uploaded still be accessible? You can, we can do a mass export that you can export out. So it is a cloud-based software. Um, on our end, we cannot see patient files. However, any of your data in there, if you choose to discontinue, can be exported out. And we do offer a 30-day trial as well. All right. Uh, can you please address the cybersecurity aspects and legal responsibilities re the cloud when using MouthWatch? So cloud-based software is actually fairly common. And because, again, we're password protected, we're um, encrypted, we're working towards that what's considered high trust, which is even a step above that, that it's all encrypted, password protected again. And so I would probably defer that mostly to one of my other team members because I'm a dental hygienist by trade. I'm not an IT person by trade, um, but I'm happy if you want to email me, I can get you to the right person to answer that. Great. Well, that is all the questions that I'm seeing. So thank you, Jamie, for your time. Great content as always. As a thank you for attending today, everyone will receive this recording via email sometime in the next week. If anyone is interested and would like to learn more about future webinars, visit henryshinedental.com slash webinars to view our upcoming schedule. Thank you all for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you back here soon.